Hey Tigers, welcome to your digital reteach for inherited traits. This reteach will cover the TEAK 7.14c. In this TEAK, it is your job to recognize that inherited traits of individuals are governed in the genetic material found in genes within the chromosomes in the nucleus. While you're working on this reteach, it's important that you make sure you understand how you get credit for this so that your teacher will know that you've completed this. The first thing you need to do is use the Cornell Note worksheet that came from your teacher while you watched this video. If you don't have one, you need to go back to your teacher and get one. Take notes, answer the questions, and write your summary. When you're finished, show your completed Cornell Note worksheet to your teacher. They will then give you information about your next opportunity to retest. As we begin, it's important that we make sure we just start with the basics and understand what an inherited trait is. When we're talking about an inherited trait, this could be something as simple as eye color. This is something that's inherited. It's a trait about you that you got from your parents. It could be something like the complexity of your skin in terms of freckles or not. It could be something as simple as even the color of coat or the stripes that are on a, you know, a tiger. These are all inherited traits. Even something as simple as the long neck of a giraffe. That is an inherited trait something that you could actually characterize them by that is unique to that organism that came from their parents. So earlier we mentioned that a lot of this is done by genes. And that's something that we say a lot without thinking about what they really are. So let's make sure we also know what a gene is. A gene is a single section of DNA on a chromosome that has genetic information for just one trait. And that chromosome can be found inside the cell nucleus. So if you look at this picture, you got this long strand of DNA, and within a section of that DNA is the gene. So if you think back to those traits earlier, maybe we start thinking about eye color. Somewhere the color of your eyes, you got a gene from your parents, one from each parent. That gene is in this part of the DNA that is found within the chromosomes, and those chromosomes are found inside the nucleus that's inside a cell. So we've kind of already hit on this, but really it's important just to think about how organisms actually get those traits. So if we use the example of cats, let's say we've got a cat with kind of orangish fur and a cat that's got kind of grayish fur. If we think about this, each cat donates one cell during reproduction. So if the orange mama cat over here gives one cell, and then the dad gray cat gives another cell, when those cells combine, those two single cells combine together to make a zygote. Here you can see the gene for orange and the gene for gray, and this combines to get ready to make another offspring. The end result is a cat that does indeed have one of those traits. In this case, the orange fur went out, and now we've got a kitten that has that trait. He got that because of the genes from each one of the parents. Now, in terms of testing this concept, this is just a sample question. The Texas Education Agency did use this one as an example on a star test a couple years back. So this question states that three cousins have a similar appearance but different face shapes. So as we look at the different faces on the cousins, we need to start thinking about which of these cell components are most involved in determining the basic shape of each girl's face. This is actually one of those questions that you probably don't even need the pictures of the girls, to be honest. You just need to think about what you know about what was on those previous slides we just looked at. So we start looking at it. On your notes, you're going to write down your answer, but I also want you to write down a couple of the wrong answers and think about a reason why it's wrong and list that. I'll give you a really, really, really simple one. Um, I'm just going to flat out tell you the answer choice D is wrong. And if we start thinking about why this is wrong, I'm just going to say that the only thing in here that makes any sense at all is chromosomes. And the fact that chloroplast and vacuoles was never mentioned before is a major problem. On top of that, chloroplast is kind of found in plant cells, not human cells. So in this case, there's no genetic makeup to be had there. 